this is a video that's going to cover the triple outcomes only for the 3B rates of reaction topic in IGCSE chemistry. So the learning outcome for this particular topic is simply to draw and explain reaction profile diagrams, being able to show both delta H and your activation energy. So delta H being your enthalpy change. So this does link into 3A energetics, and you can find more information about that topic on a separate video. So what is a rate of reaction? Well, it is the speed at which an amount of reactants either decreases or the amount of products increases. And we measure it as a change in the concentration per unit time. Okay, so, and we calculate it using this equation here. So our change in concentration, volume or mass divided by the time. Now you can see in the double content video, there are a number of factors that can affect the rate of reaction. We're not going to go into all of those factors here today. The one that we're going to focus on are catalysts. So what is a catalyst? A catalyst is a substance that is going to speed up a chemical reaction, but it is not used up in the reaction. Now, this is an important definition. However, it is not quite a suitable definition for IGCSE. We actually want to go a step further with this. Now, one reason that they are not consumed in the reaction is because we only use very small amounts of catalysts in order to process lots and lots of reactant particles, and we always regenerate the catalyst at the end. The new definition that we should be using is this third bullet point down here, and it is saying that catalysts work by providing an alternative route for the reaction, and it involves a lower activation energy. Please note that it does not lower the activation energy of the initial reaction. It is very important that you specify it is an alternative route or an alternative pathway. We can show the effects of this on a reaction profile diagram. So if we take this first one here, we can see that we have our reactants going to our products and they go up through a curve to the top down to the bottom which are our reactants and the activation energy is the distance between the top of this curve and the reactants and then we sometimes will label this e a or sometimes just e now when we add in a catalyst we get this second one and you can see there is a difference here so this blue curve is our original root and this green curve as our catalyzed route. And you can see there is quite a large difference in our activation energy here. So this part here is our activation energy for the green route. And that is much lower than the original. So we're providing this alternative pathway that gives us a lower activation energy. So it makes it more likely that our reaction will occur at a faster rate. So we want to look at just a few past paper questions on these. They are quite simple and they tend to be very repetitive because there only is a number of ways that they can ask about this one objective. So the reaction, sh uh, sorry, the diagram shows a reaction profile for the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide without a catalyst. So part one is asking you to label the activation energy Ea for this reaction. Well, we're going to draw just a dotted line here, extend that out from our reactants. So make sure that we understand that these are our reactants and these are our products. And our activation energy is going to be the energy from the bottom of this dotted line up to the top of this curve. And that is going to be labeled Ea for our activation energy. So that's part one done. Part two, we're looking for the same diagram. We want to draw a curve to represent the reaction profile for the same reaction when a catalyst is used. So this is where we have to draw this additional curve. Now be very careful that you have the curve going in the same way. It needs to follow the same shape, but it just needs to be a shorter curve. So we start from the hydrogen peroxide and we go up smaller, coming to a peak before coming down and then joining in with the water. You can see that we have this smaller curve now with our activation energy for our catalyzed reaction. And of course, we've got our mark scheme. So we have our first mark for part one was giving us a vertical line between the top of the hydrogen peroxide and the top of the curve 
um, label the activation energy, we're going to ignore any arrows. <clears throat> and for part two, we want the curve to be starting and ending at our reactants and products, which we've covered, and the peak of the curve has to be below the original curve. So let's look at past paper question number two. <clears throat> this is going to link into energetics. So we've got two different reactions happening here, and the one that we want to focus on is reaction number one here. Now, because this Enthalpy change is exothermic. That's going to tell us how we're going to be able to draw our reaction profile. So when something is exothermic, it is giving out energy. So that means the energy of our products is going to be less than the energy of our reactants. So part one is asking us to complete the profile by showing the products of the reaction and then showing the enthalpy change. So we're going to just extend this curve down, making sure that it comes below where our products were. And then we're going to have to write in, sorry, where our reactants were. Then we're going to have to write in CH3OH, that's our product. And our enthalpy change is going to be the difference between these two curves. And this is delta H. Okay, part B or part two is then asking us to draw an arrow on the profile to represent the activation energy for the forward reaction. So that is, of course, going from our reactants to our products. So that's looking at this line here once again and going up from the line to the top of the curve. And we're going to label this B and that is our activation energy. Okay, we do want to make sure that we don't have any arrow pointing downwards. Um, we can have a double-headed arrow, that's absolutely fine, but do not have your arrows only pointing in one direction if they're pointing the wrong way. So if you're not sure, just draw a vertical line. And here's an example from the mark scheme of what it should look like. And that gets you your two marks plus your one mark for the last question. That's it for rates of reaction for triple. As you can see, it is not an awful lot that we have to cover, but it is important that we do know how to draw these diagrams. Check back later for another video on rates of reaction for double or any other content that you might be needing help with. <laughs>